Hello everybody, Jim Messina is my name. I'm a vintage drum collector, kind of a nut about it, and I hope you are too. If you've been following along with these videos, you'll know that I've been presenting interviews from famous collectors at the Chicago show, and also showing some of the drums and some interesting pieces from my collection. And here's one of them. Uh, this is a, a project that I've been working on for probably about three years. Uh, it's a Ludwig and Ludwig. Uh, trap stand or trap console uh, from the 1927 catalog. That's when it first showed up. And by the time the 1932 catalog came out, it was being widely used. You can see a lot of the endorsers using this stand. And what they did back in those days is they needed somewhere to hold all their accoutrements, all the sound effects, their sticks, and uh, because the drum set was still developing. Uh, but it's funny how I came across it. I was visiting a fellow drum collector's house uh, where he stored his collection. He wasn't a 20s, 30s, 40s collector like I am, so he had some of these pieces, and he really didn't know what they were. They, he just had a few of the pieces, namely these two corner pieces, these are cast aluminum, the theatrical stands right here, the, the feet, and these two rings right here. That's all that came with it. He didn't know what they were for. He just knew that they came with this old bass drum that he had, a 1920s bass drum. It was 25 and a half inches, kind of beat up. It had been recovered and all that, but it, it came with these pieces. I recognized what the pieces were because I had just seen a spread on Bunny Carlos's collection in Bunny's barn, and up on one of the shelves in the background where was were these feet and the, Bunny Carlos is the only other person I know that actually had physically owns a, a Ludwig trap stand like this. So I had the six pieces. Didn't have any of this trap board or anything like that. That all had to be fabricated. Plus the upright post here, we had to fabricate those, cut them to the right size and all that. But I couldn't have done it without Bunny's help. I contacted him and he was really cooperative and helpful. He, uh, he actually emailed me pictures of his table. He went, climbed up there and got it down. He happened to have a photographer coming over that night to do some other photography in his studio there. And he held it at different angles and showed me all the important things that I need to know in order to reproduce the rest of this table. He even gave me measurements. We talked over the phone and I still have a little more to complete on it because up here on the top we need to drill holes, okay, to hold what they call L-arms that go to a trap table. And they hold small symbols, they hold temple blocks. Uh, that's a whole other segment. I have other drum sets here with standard uh, trap tables that hold five temple blocks, which is very common in those days. We'll get to that later. But as far as the construction on this, I owe it all to, once again, I mentioned him in an earlier video, Pat Ellick. He's uh, kind of a whiz with wood here, and he helps me out a lot of my projects. I know nothing about woodworking, and he does. He just, he's not a drummer, he's a carpenter. He, he knows he's a master woodworker, and he just applies everything that he's learned over the years in building furniture and cabinetry to drum making. He built the drop down piece, he built the board, all of this, all according to Bunny Carlos' specs. Uh, but what's interesting is about this board, this table, it's the only one that has a drop down piece like this. And what you do is the drummers had pieces that would clamp on here, holders that would clamp onto hoops. You know, bass drum hoops, but they would also clamp onto these trap tables, such as this this uh, tom holder that I have right here. It holds a Chinese tom, but you can connect, connect all kinds of things to these uh, to these trap tables, such as uh, a wood block holder. I'll keep talking while I attach these, just to show you some of the things you can do uh, that they did back in those days. They take a wood block like this. 
connect that up. And there you go, and it just connects right to this piece. But they could get a lot of stuff onto these uh, these trays because uh, they have a lot of accoutrements. Stick holder. This is a rather strange stick, uh, stick holder. It's just kind of like a spring, and you set your sticks right in there. And then you could attach maybe something like this. This is a symbol holder on a spring, which is common in those days. But you could clamp all kinds of things to this. Uh, and a cowbell. The sky was the limit. Plus, don't, don't forget, you had all the, the temple blocks lining the back row. So these things got really elaborate. And, uh, of course, they had the other accoutrements like a, a triangle, even sound effects, slide whistle, and you could throw your, your brushes up on top of the table also. A mallet for the cymbal. Even goofy things like this. In the vaudeville days, they had to some, have some place to hang these things. Now, as far as the more development of this, of the drum set, uh, toms as we know them today didn't exist yet. So what they were using were Chinese toms, such as this. And they would fit right in the rings. That's how I figured that out to be. Now get this, in the catalog, it talks about, you know, the deluxe package, and you know, including the rings. Yeah, the whole setup cost thirty-six dollars in nineteen twenty-seven. Imagine buying a rack today for thirty-six dollars. But there you go. You have these Chinese toms. They would fit right on here like this. This is a special holder for Chinese toms. And there you have it. There it is. 1927, Ludwig and Ludwig. I consider this to be a very rare piece, even though we had to fabricate a lot of it ourselves. I've never seen another one other than bunnies, but they, they probably do exist out there, but uh, I haven't seen them, and my, my chances of finding this top part, I think, was zero. So that's why we went ahead and made the decision to complete these, because we had the most important pieces, those, those corner cast aluminum pieces. That makes the whole thing, and it just made it, the rest of it possible. So thanks to my friend in North Fort Myers, his name is Ted Smith, and he had another set that... Uh, that we talked about, and I have it now. It's a very interesting set. That's another segment too, and I'll be showing you uh, Ted's collection. Even though he doesn't claim to be a, a drum collector, huh, for somebody who is not a collector, he's got a ton of sets. Uh, Roger's set with the Dynasonic, uh, Blue Onyx, and all kinds of stuff. But this is my Ludwig and Ludwig 1927 trap stand. If you want to see more vintage videos like this, go to GUMPH1234, that's G-U-M-P-H-1234. You can see all the interviews, you can see more drums from my collection, so thanks for stopping by.